TBR. I don't know what that was to prove other than the fact that uh, I'm silly and that's all there is to it. But I'm here today. I want to talk about the books, what got to be read in April of 2024. Some of you may know of such things as a TBR. And so I'm going to talk about that. I've never usually do this because I am such a schizophrenic reader. I, and in terms of I'll read, I read I schedule and I set a timer. I read an hour and two minutes every day at least. Sometimes I'll go over and it seems like a lot of times I do. If my wife's going to read or one of my kids are going to read or I get up too early in the morning and can't sleep, I might read a little extra. But as a rule, I read an hour at least a day. <clears throat> when I And I always will have a plan of books that I want to read. I, the book's what got to be read and I got a big stack over there and I got a little stack over here now and a bunch of them back over there. And usually I'll keep little notes on my phone saying what I want to read next. Uh, the thing is, when I finish a book, so often at that moment, I decide I want to read something for different reasons. Whether it be the book I'm reading right now, I want more of that. Or the book I'm reading right now has got me a war slap out and I want to read something else to try to get back in the swing of things. Or whatever. Or maybe somebody recommended something that I need to read or there's a new book coming out, a limited edition, and I want to try to read it to decide if if I want to buy the book. Or maybe it's a limited edition book that I have and I'm trying to decide, do I really need to keep this? Do I need to knuckle up or shut up um, <laughs> and read this book and decide if it's something I want to keep or if I would just want to move on down, sell it, get rid of it, something like that to make space on the shelf or space in the budget, or whatever the case may be. So a lot of things affect what I'm going to read next. And I can't always just say I'm going to read this and this and this and this and this. And so I always felt like these TBR videos weren't quite for me. But you know what? I'm going to give it a crack and I'm going to try to stick to it. So, <laughs> with all that being said, uh, as a preface or up front here, right now I'm reading this book and I'm almost done. Done. You can see I got a, I'll finish that one today. This is True Grit by Charles Portis. So it's the book currently being read. And I don't usually read a lot of Westerns. I love Western films, but I don't read a lot of Western books. I've read, a, I've read some some splatter westerns. I've read some horror westerns. I've read what you would call Joe R. Lansdale westerns, I guess, which maybe don't fit quite in the boxes just right. But as far as true traditional westerns, I don't read a lot. But this movie starring John Wayne has always been for years and years a very big part of my life, an important part of my life, and a bonding similarity that I had with my, my dad. We would quote lines from the movie back and forth and it was kind of a feel-good thing we'd watch the movie a time or two together as well and I figured man I need to just read the stinking book and I'm almost done I'll tell you what I think of it some other time how's that sound but getting off of that book I almost want to read more westerns but I got a plan I got books that I need to read so I will make a commitment to read more traditional western books in the future because i'm really enjoying this ride i know what's happening because i've seen two versions of the movie many many times but i'm really enjoying this ride so to the tbr for april of 2024 first up it's going to be don't fear the reaper and i recently read my heart is a chainsaw by stephen graham jones now, that book has turned into a, a trilogy, the Indian Lake Trilogy. And the first book, My Heart is a Chainsaw, was kind of, uh, I'd say, medium popularity for Stephen Graham Jones. There were a lot of folks that, that didn't love the book and some that, that did. But uh, I read that book and I, I really loved it. I mean, the Goodreads rating was probably something like three and a half out of five. And to me, it's it's as close to five as it gets. Now I can see, I can concede some of the points that some folks might have about that. And I don't want to spoil it, but essentially there you have a teenage girl named Jade, who's a half native American, half 
Irish, I think. I can't remember. She's half white and half Native American. How's that sound? Uh, and she doesn't really seem to fit in anywhere. And she's addicted to the slasher film genre. <clears throat> Everything in life is related to slashers. And it's really her only true comfort and solace. Uh, well, she starts to determine that she starts to see signs that she thinks a slasher is about to occur in their town of Proof Rock. And there's this new girl named Letha who is perfect. Everything about her seems good and right and just and strong and intelligent and kind and all these things. And Jade believes that she's going to be the final girl in this slasher that's about to occur in Proof Rock. And so anyway, I won't get into all the details of that, but this is the sequel, and it is book two of a trilogy. And the third book may, in fact, be in my mailbox as we speak. I ordered a signed hardcover edition from Barnes & Noble, and I on the phone there, the app, it says it's been delivered. So I may have the third book in the Indian Lake trilogy sit in the mailbox. But anyway, my first book for the month of April is going to be Don't Fear the Reaper, book two in the Indian Lake trilogy. And I don't necessarily want to get into the details of this book because it will offer spoilers for the first book. But it is book two of a trilogy. So you can kind of make some assumptions about book one, but I won't, I won't, I won't even bother doing that. Anyway, this book is held in a much higher regard from the Goodreads Raider people, people that vote on Goodreads. They got this one much higher up on their ratings, which is good to know, but it's also makes me wonder the first book wasn't so popular and I loved it. This book is very popular. Am I Mr. Opposite? I try not to be, I try not to follow, I try not to chase fads or modify my opinion to reflect that of the, the, the popular folks or anything like that. But I also try not to be Mr. Opposite. I try to look at things on what works for me. And if, if everybody loves something, that shouldn't have any effect on whether or not I love it. That's the way I look at it. If everybody loves it and I hate it, well, that's just the way it is. But if everybody loves it and I love it, well, that's also the way it is. Uh, but I do wonder if I loved the first one so much, but so many others didn't, are they going to love things about this book that I don't like? I don't know. But we'll see. This one is next up and I'm looking forward to it. I've actually put it off a little bit because I did want to try a few things out in my reading life. And I did, I read some science fiction, which I don't read a ton of sci-fi. I read a Western, which I don't read a ton of Westerns either. I read a lot more sci-fi than I read Westerns, but not really a bunch of, of either type. So there it is, the first book for April. And one more thing about this book is I have a signed limited edition from SST Publications. And I'm pleased, happy, beautiful book, excellent publication from excellent people. It's signed by the author. It looks nice in this nice little slip case here. But it's another one. I need to justify the sweet book on my shelf with saying that I've read the book and I loved it. I loved it enough to be able to keep it, even though I could probably sell this book at a profit. If I love it, I keep it. It's the way it works for me. It may not be the great thing to say on the YouTube, but I don't read 10, 20, 40, 60 books on a good month for me. Hitting four books in a month, four real books. I'm not talking about little tiny things. Hitting four good solid books in a month is, is good. I'm okay with that. I read an hour a day. I'm consistent with my reading. Uh, I don't read like the blazes and I don't read like a two-year-old either. But um, that's typically what I go through. If I if I finish a book in a week, yeah, I'm okay with that. So some uh, some months like this one, I think seven books is what I'm going to be finishing in the month of March. Uh, so some go, sometimes it goes better than other times. But that's just to let you know, that's where I'm at. Four to six books in a month. I'm cool with it. Why can't you be? No, I'm just kidding. So I think there's a lot of pressure on YouTube to just pump up those numbers and I don't really feel it. I don't feel it. I read for enjoyment. I read because I like to read. 
I feel better about myself when I'm reading. So I read. That's it. Bottom line. Anyway, now on to the next book that I intend to read in the month of April. And this one is another one. I got to justify a purchase here. That's what I'm doing. Levidian Publications, one of my favorite publishers, Walk in God's Green Earth, just like SST. Love them people. Love these people. They published a book by Bentley Little called The Store. And whether it be FOMO or that it looks so good or that I was just in the mood to buy or I'm a big fan of Levidian Publications and all that stuff, this book was pretty well regarded in many cases. So I pushed them buttons. It's signed. I'll show you real quick. I uh, pushed them buttons, got the book coming, and it's been on my shelf for a little while. Number 278 of 750 copies signed by the artist, the author, and the person who wrote the introduction, Jeff Strand. And so the store sounded like a, a very great premise, something that I think I would enjoy. Um, some folks say that Bentley Little is one of the greats in horror, and some say he's awful. <laughs> I don't know. I've never read a Bentley Little book. But in true fashion on what I do and how I do things, I usually don't read those fancy limited editions. If I got one, I'll occasionally read one. And I intend to read one in, a, in April, a limited edition book. But typically what I'll do is I'll try to find a used soft cover version that I can get real cheap. So I don't have to worry about taking good care of a book and being so careful about it while I'm going through the process of reading, whether it be reading in the kitchen on the table in the, the book room here, which is actually just our bedroom, my wife and I, uh, whether it be reading in the car or reading on an airplane or in a waiting room or a lobby, I don't want to have to worry about these books. So I typically will get cheap versions. And I did that with the store saying, I got to read this to see if I want to keep that one or sell it if I don't want to keep it. And uh, again, I've never read the author, never read the book. So this is an interesting one for me. I'll read the back just to see what it's all about here. And it says, no refunds, no exchanges, no exit. Juniper, Arizona is an off the map desert town. The retail giant called The Store in capital letters has chosen for its new location. It has everything you could possibly want under one roof at unbelievable prices. Sound familiar? But this place demands something of its customers that goes beyond brand loyalty. At the store, one-stop shopping has become a last-stop shopping. Bill Davis, I got—I actually know somebody named Bill Davis. I do. Anyway, <laughs> Bill Davis is the only one in town who senses the evil lurking within the store. But he can't stop his two teenage daughters from taking jobs there and falling under the frightening influence of its sadistic manager. When Bill finally takes a stand, he'll get much more than he bargained for at a terrifying cost. So much more to pay less for. So much more than he bargained for. But it sounds really cool. And I'm looking forward to finally reading this book. Seeing if I like Bentley Little. Or maybe I like the store, but I don't necessarily like it. I don't know. But this would be a gateway drug for me. <clears throat> Getting my foot in the door to see if I want to read more. Do I? I don't know. Let's find out. Next up. This one is a limited edition book that I intend to read. And this one I got from Centipede Press. Another one of those favorite publishers out there walking God's green earth. It is John McPartland's Tokyo Doll. And this one has been described as noir. And so I am all in. It's an older book. And one of the cool things about Centipede Press is that they will publish books that are kind of forgotten or unknown. And many times the author has already deceased. So it is a limited edition book, though it is not signed and uh, it's got some neat illustrations inside. And mine is numbered 279 of 500 copies, although it is not signed by anyone here at all. But there's the, the artwork on the back. It is so good. There's a disease afloat, and this XGI is out. He's been commissioned to, to try to find the cure, to try to secure 
the cure. And so it's, uh, he gets into all sorts of espionage and intrigue, and it is described as heavily noir. Everybody says noir. I don't know what that means, but I like it. <laughs> I like that kind of stuff. Anyway, so Tokyo Doll would be next up for April, and I'm looking forward to that one. And I'll be reading this edition here. Trying to find a cheap paperback copy of this is unlikely. So I'm going to read this one, and if I, it sounds like my thing. Sounds like my bag, but if it didn't, I'm just going to move it on down the line. Hopefully not get my pants pulled down on the deal at the same time. <clears throat> so I got a few more here that I'm um, wishful thinking, hoping to put on the list. And the next one up is Jim Butcher's Grave Peril. You can see this one is my definition of ratty old paperback, cheap, cheap, cheap. And I've got a couple different, I've got a few variations of the first book in this series the harry dresden files i've got a few different nice signed versions of stormfront and then full moon i've read and really liked that one as well so grave perils up next on the list there was a time when i read uh, a series and i would start it and if i liked the first book i would just read on and on and on and on and on and i probably really, really don't do that very often anymore I tend to let stuff breathe a little bit more because there's so much more that I read now than I ever used to read in the past. Different types, different genres, different authors, what have you. So uh, in this case, I read the first couple and you now it's been a little while. So I'm reading another one and I've got a few series like that where I've started them, liked them, but kind of set them to the side for later. And that's what I'm doing here. Looking forward to it. Harry Dresden is a wizard. Modern day Chicago, well, maybe... 10, 15 years ago was modern day Chicago. But anyway, it's this time. It's not in the future or a land far, far away. And he's uh, he's uh, like a private investigator. Or an, he does all sorts of things. But it's fun because there's suspense. There's action. There's sci-fi fantasy stuff. And there's also this urban mercenary detective kind of stuff all folded in. If you've ever read Robert B. Parker's Spencer series, well, Jim Butcher compares this, or at least he says his inspiration for this comes heavily from the Spencer series by Robert B. Parker, which actually brings us up to the next one on my list. This is book two of the Spencer series. Let me and I read the God Wolf Manuscript and I really loved that book. I grew up, but I don't remember exactly when, but I was pretty young when Robert Urich's Spencer for Hire series was on TV, and I really liked that series. I was a big fan of Hawk, but uh, after reading a God Wolf manuscript, I liked it even more, and I went back and I watched a lot of that series again after reading it. It was an easy read. It was a light read, and it was fun, but more than anything, it made me want more of that world, so here is book two. I've read, actually, multiple Jesse Stone novels from Robert Parker, but I haven't read any more than the first book out of this series, so it's time. It's time to get deep, and I don't know how many of them I'm going to read. There were a bunch. It went on and on and on, and a lot of times when series go on and on and on, they kind of stop getting good after a while, but I'll read them until I figure I'm not enjoying it anymore, but I definitely want to read more. And uh, I strongly recommend the God Wolf Manuscript. Now, these aren't modern books. These books are from the 70s. So it's a lot of our the way we look at things, the way we judge people and the things they say and things they do are going to be different than they were in the 70s. And what's wrong with that? It's always the way it's been. Things change over time. The way people talk changes over time. Changes based on where they're at, the culture that they live in, and things along those lines. Uh, so there is some, probably some differences in here that might not be great with uh, everybody there. But I really did like God Wolf Manuscript, and I'm really looking forward to God Save the Child. And if you look at the cover here, that was the inspiration for the when I started this video. Anyway... Uh, last one, and this is lofty, for me this is lofty, ambitious planning, but I got one more that I say I'm going to read in April, and I'm going to shoot for it, I'm going to shoot for it, try to get it done, what's it called, 
<laughs> and it's called, and this one is called Finger Lickin' 15 by Janet Ivanovich. And if my count's correct, it's actually the 17th book because they have a couple of between the numbers volumes then are novellas for this series but uh this is the 15th one i started reading this series i think in 2022 wait 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 this is why you have no friends somebody who can't tell the difference between 2022 and 2002 probably needs a little bit of assistance the very first one was called one for the money and it's the Stephanie Plum series. And I read One for the Money. It wasn't the first book I'd ever read by a female author. I'd read probably a handful at that point, books by female authors. But this one was the first one that made me say, I love that author, this series anyway. One for the Money, and then Two for the Dough, and Three to Get Deadly, and Four to Score, and High Five, and Hot Six, and yada, 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 yada. Before I knew it, Janet Ivanovich was one of my favorite authors, Walking God's Green Earth. And I've only ever read the Stephanie Plum series from her. I understand that she has more of a background in romance, and that since this series exploded, she's moved off into other characters perhaps in this more adventure genre but that's kind of what it is it's fun it's funny it's light-hearted it's adventurous it doesn't take itself too seriously stephanie plum is exactly all of those things in the very very beginning she was a girl who got fired from her job at the tampon factory she's divorced and it was an ugly divorce she really did some awful things to her ex because he did some awful things to her she's down and out down on her luck and she needs a job to pay the rent. And her cousin, I think it was her cousin. It's been a long time since I've been on this series. But her cousin, I think his name was, anyway. She's got a relative that owns a bail bonds business. And she blackmailed him in, strong-armed him into giving her a job collecting as a bounty hunter. Go figure. Zero experience. No knowledge. No skills. No nothing other than a need for money. And uh, so she's she jumps right in. She makes friends with one of the other bounty hunters, one bad dude, guy named Ranger. He sort of takes her under his wing, but not in the most selfless manner. <laughs> and uh, so the series goes on and develops and lots of things. The first, the characters in the first one become bigger later on and more characters are added. And it's a great series. That's why I'm still reading it, Finger Licking 15. So I'm really looking forward to that. And this is one of them that the only excuse I have for not reading one of these every year when they come out is that there's just so many things I want to read. So I love this series. It's so fun. I'll pick up this book and you don't want to set it down until it's over for me. It's just fun. It's enjoyment. I feel better when I'm reading it. I smile. I laugh. I like this kind of stuff. But I strongly recommend the Stephanie Plum series, Janet Ivanovich. Now they're in the 30s, I think. See, I got off that train a long time ago as far as reading every time one came out, reading the book. And so I've I've read, I think in the last 12 years, I read Fearless 14 and maybe the one before that, which I think was Lean Mean 13. I think I've read two of these in 12 years. So I'm going to jump on this one here and get this one read. And maybe I'll be a little bit more prolific on the Stephanie Plum reading. But that's my projected TBR for April of 2024, whatever year we're in right now. I can't remember. Who remembers that kind of stuff? That's my projections. I'm going to tell you now, more than likely something will come up and knock me off track, but I can guarantee I'm starting off book one right here, right away. And that's a fact, Jack. And I can think of no more lies to tell so thank you for your time i do truly appreciate it say la vie baby Doo -doo. what a goof i embarrass myself sometimes <laughs>
The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. The movie truly is better than the book. I love reading in nature. 